in high school or in college, he says to me, you know, these student loans are kicking my butt, so I'm going to take a semester or a couple of semesters off. I'm going, I'm going to, to, to Afghanistan. The next time I saw the young man, he was in a box with those broad stripes and bright stars draped over his coffin. He had a plan. It didn't work. And I'm telling you that every plan you make may not work, but that is no reason for you to give up. Uncertain triumph. I hear people say this all the time. They'll say to me, failure is not an option. That can't be further from the truth. Because every risk, every chance at success has an option for failure in it. The true leader recognizes that, yes, failure is an option, but I will not succumb to it. I'm going to factor it into the equation. Yes, I may not make it here. I may, I may fail this class, but you know what? I'm going to take it in summer school, I'm going to study harder, and I'm going to pass it. You know why? I got that uncertain triumph stuck in my chest. I applied for this job, and I didn't get this job, but I know that there's a better job out there, so I'm going to research the market, I'm going to polish myself up, and I'm going to get the next one. Uncertain triumph. You see, my family life is hard. Mm. The burdens of my relationships are heavy. My kids are driving me down, but the weight of the problem lifting it up makes me strong. Uncertain triumph. We used to say in the church, I know some how, and I know some way I'm gonna make it. No matter what the test, whatever comes my way, I'm gonna make it. That's that uncertain triumph. The problem is, in life, you're going to always have two sides. You're going to have two issues. You're going to have two people. And they're going to be pulling you this way and they're going to be pulling you that way. I remember when I was in college, we used to uh, have these things called gassers. And gassers are running across the field and back and across the field and back, which is about 200 yards, which is like from here to that building behind you and back. And we had a clock. And we got in trouble one week because somebody snuck out of their hotel room at the Wisconsin game before the game. I don't know who that somebody was. <laughs> but I got blamed for it. So the team is running. And while we're running, we're going back and forth. And I have a guy, and he's in my left ear. Man, more, I'm tired, man. I'm hot, man. This, this is stupid, man. The coach, this don't make no sense, man. I'm going to quit. You know what? I'm going to go grab my hamstring on the next one, and I'm going to step out and act like I'm hurt. Every time we came back, he said the same thing. And then I had a guy on my right, and the guy on my right said, come on, more. We got one more. Come on, more. We got one more. We can do this. I'm tired. Too tired. We can do this. You got one more. We got one more. What you realize is as time passes, you're going to become one of those people. Are you going to be the guy that quits and looks for the way out? Or the person that says, we got one more, we can make it uncertain triumph. We didn't even know how many we had, but we knew we weren't going to quit. You become the people that you surround yourself with. If you want to make it, if you want to be successful in life, you surround yourself with that guy on the right. You can make it. We got one more. It was a minor setback. I know it hurts. I'm hurting with you, but let's hurt together and win. If you want to lose, tell the guy on the left he's right. Tell society they're right. Tell them everything they say about you is right. Tell them everything they said about your race is right. Tell them everything they said about your family is right. Tell them everything they said about your neighborhood is right and join the struggle. Get in the mud and stay there. Or get that uncertain triumph in your heart. <coughs> leaders, that's what you guys are. The future leaders of America. You are created by your circumstances. You're not here by happenstance. You're not here for no reason. You're here because you want to get better. That's right. The 
circumstances put you here and you're here to make yourself better. You are driven by your desires. The love of yourself, the love of your family, the love of your friend, the love of success, the love of becoming better. But you will be immortalized by the decisions that you make. Everybody remembers the decisions that you make. Every day creates your history. Every day. Every day that you live, you are creating your history. And every morning you get up and you put your feet on the ground, you're writing a new chapter of your life. And if the day before was bad, then when you wake up the next morning, you make it better. So when they close that book, they said that person's life is good. That's right. That person we love, they were beloved. They were needed. They were well received. They were successful. They were triumphant. I want to uh, talk to you about circumstances. As I said earlier, your circumstances do not determine your outcome. They do not. Where you start off is not where you're finished. But you have to press through. You have to push on. You will never, ever, ever hear the story about the man that walked around Mount Everest. You hear the story about the guy that walked around the mountain? Did they talk about that guy? No. Dude, or listen, you will never hear the story about the, the hero losing to the villain. Mm. Nobody wants to hear that story. Or maybe you heard the story about <laughs> the guy that was almost elected the first black president. Almost. That's Jesse Jackson. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, tell your age. Tell your age. <laughs> we don't hear about that. No. We hear about the guy that, that climbed Mount Everest. We hear about Superman racing, racing to the rescue. You hear about him, the newly elected. The once again elected President Barack Obama. That's what history tells us. Our history, our history, our American Recording history your dad. is flooded with leadership. <clears throat> and it's not to say that those people didn't have hard times. They didn't have hard, they had hard times. It was hard for them. I'm sure the guy that sloshed up Mount Everest in that frost bit of snow, he didn't like it all the time. As a matter of fact, he lost a couple of toes and fingers. I'm sure that Superman, every time Kryptonite comes around, and I wait for that part of the movie, he take those lumps. That's just how it is. The guys came outside and was like, son of Jarrell, can you step outside? We got something for you. <laughs> Superman got boxed for 35 minutes, then he wins. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> and you definitely hear about our president in Obamacare. There's no way, you know, you're not going to be successful without opposition. You're not going to be successful without opposition. However, your circumstances do not define who you are. They reveal who you are. Yes. Yes, I came from the gutter. But look at me now. Yes, my mama had me when she was 16. But look at me now. We've all been there. But the only way that we're gonna move forward is if we keep fighting, if we keep pushing forward. If every day we step forward no matter what the opposition. I wanna leave you guys with a couple of keys of success, I called it. The first one is everybody needs a God. Listen to what I'm saying before you get to preach. To serve. You need something to believe in. Because those nights when you sit on the edge of your bed, when you sit on that curb, when you sit in the hallway with your head down, if you can't solve the problem, you have to believe in something that can. So find something to believe in bigger than yourself. Number two, you need a friend. Friends build families. You can make all the money in the world. You can have all the esteem in the world. 
but if you have no one to share it with, it's worthless. And I want you to think of that again. All the money in the world, all the fame in the world, and nobody to share it with. Have you ever felt worthless? Felt by yourself? Alone? Girl, put your hand down. Money doesn't change them. Finally, the ifs. Rudyard Kipling's ifs. If is a very small word, tiny word, two letters. Big meaning. If is a condition that must be met. If I go to school and study, then I get good grades. If I work hard in this program, then I will graduate and have a job waiting for me. If I write these love letters and send her flowers <laughs> and tell her how much I care, then she'll like me back. That never worked for me, so don't try that. <laughs> I wasted I waste a lot of flower money on that one. <laughs> if, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and make allowances for their doubting too, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves and set a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can take a heap of all your winnings and risk it all in a game of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue, talk with kings nor knows your common touch, if either foe nor loving friend can hurt you, if all men count with you with none too much, if you can force your heart, your nerve, and your sinew to serve your turn long after you're gone, or so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to you, hold on. If you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of a distance run, then yours is the world and everything in it. And what's more, you'll be a woman, my daughter. You will be a man, my son. Thank you very much. For your